Okay. Okay. Oh. So, hello and welcome. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join me for this free event. Please mute your microphones so there are no disturbances during the presentation. Let's get this out of the way right at the start. I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, or a registered therapist. I cannot diagnose, treat, or cure any diseases, and I can't make any promises about your health. This webinar is for informational purposes only. I never want you to disregard anything your doctor or therapist has prescribed. So I'll be talking a little bit about AFT, which is Aroma Freedom Technique, my master program, Healing the Past, Empowering the Present, and something new I've been doing that has allowed me to achieve astounding results in healing my body, especially my chronic pain. Are you ready? Okay, awesome. Let's get started. So, who am I? And why should you even take the time to watch this webinar? I'm Marg Rakoski. You know me as Maggie on social media. I'm a certified aroma freedom practitioner trained in healing emotional issues from the past present and future. I use that plus a little hypnotherapy, lots of guided meditations, courses, and programs. That's my niche, healing emotions. But I realized that feeling better emotionally wasn't enough. I had to address the whole body, not just the emotions. So if you know me at all, you know I'm always searching for something that helps. Well, I found something new that I've been testing. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. First, we'll talk about emotions and the body, then a guided meditation to make sure I'm not leaving you feeling triggered. Does that sound good to you? Awesome. Get ready to be wowed. First, here's just a little bit more about me. I've been through many traumatic instances and poor health, catching everything that went around all the time. I've got chronic pain, and that's what started me on this journey, the pain. I'll share with you, I've healed a major part of my childhood trauma and now chronic pain as well. To be truthful, the pain has lessened so much that I can easily walk without my cane and easily get out of my chair without screaming in pain. I've only done this for six days with incredible results, and I haven't had to take any painkillers all day yesterday or today. So I'm finally looking forward to what tomorrow brings. Just like you and everyone else on the planet, I'm a work in progress. I've tried many different things to reduce chronic pain. Releasing bad memories gave me some freedom, but now I'm excited to talk about what I've been doing that has made such a positive impact on my life. With each emotional healing I've experienced, I've created more joy and less physical pain. It feels amazing, but I'm not cured yet, and I'll go into that in further detail later. I can't make any promises to you about your individual results or health, but I can say that I will do my utmost to heal your unwanted memories and feelings and improve your overall health, opening you up to a happier and more fulfilling life. 
just so you're aware, I'm going to be talking about healing your bad memories or trauma first. Then I'll go into my master program and then I'll talk about healing your body. We'll finish with a relaxing meditation to release any triggers you may have felt during the webinar. I'm not just going to leave you high and dry. So the first thing to know is that healing your painful memories and emotions is not about blaming you, you, me, or anybody else. It's about you. It's about healing your emotional attachment to the past and creating a healthier body in the process. Everyone has their own demons to work with. And those who caused you pain had theirs. It doesn't mean you didn't suffer or that you approve of what happened. It just means you have to forget about them and concentrate on you. For ease of clarity, because I don't know who's going to be watching this in the future, I will be using the feminine nouns and pronouns rather than repeatedly saying he, she, his, her, boy, girl, etc. It just bogs things down. It in no way means that only females have unhappy memories. Many young boys do too. And you can use the same tools to help you heal. Maybe you didn't have a childhood trauma. Maybe you had adult trauma. The same tools apply because I believe adult trauma affects your inner child. Now that we've got all that explained, let's talk for a moment about your inner child. Do you know who that is? If you're not familiar with the term, let me explain. Again, I'm using the feminine nouns and pronouns. If you're a male, please don't be offended and bear with me. She's the little girl you used to be. She went through some really rough times and was left alone to figure it all out by herself. She's still a part of you. She forms your thoughts and feelings about many things in your life now. Everyone has an inner child. You say your inner child isn't wounded? That's great. But you may be fooling yourself. You may not even realize you have a wounded inner child. Your life as you choose to remember it was happy. You had wonderful parents. But if at some point a relatively benign situation causes you to lash out in an unwarranted, emotionally charged manner, maybe you should look deeper into your past. Before you can begin the journey of healing your inner child, you must first acknowledge that you have one. Do you understand who your inner child is and do you acknowledge that you have an inner child? Okay. Did you know that more than two thirds of American children suffered some type of childhood trauma by the age of 16? That means one in seven children as of 2021 suffered childhood trauma. In the U.S., that's one in nine girls. In Canada, it's one in four. Those are astounding numbers. And yet, many cases of childhood trauma are never even reported. Neglect is the most common abuse in the United States. Child grooming for the purpose of sexual abuse happens on average to one in four girls in the United States. More than 90% of abuses are instigated by people the children know, love, and trust. 
of those, 30 to 40% are by family members and 50% are instigated by others outside the family. And I guess those would be your friends that you trust. Those are some pretty alarming statistics, right? Childhood trauma or, or any trauma is not something you can just forget about. Now, it's possible you didn't experience childhood trauma, but perhaps you have other more recent issues to resolve. You can still use the same techniques I talk about. Did you know that early childhood trauma may even cause ADHD symptoms, PTSD, chronic pain diseases like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and many other things? Early childhood trauma can have a significant impact on both your physical and your mental health, potentially increasing the risk of developing various diseases and conditions later in life. While it is important to note that not everyone who experiences childhood trauma will develop these issues, research suggests that there may be a link between early trauma and certain health outcomes. Some potential long-term effects of early childhood trauma include mental health disorders, such as depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and borderline personality disorder. Cardiovascular diseases, adverse childhood experiences, ACE for short, can increase the risk of developing heart disease high blood pressure, and other cardiovascular conditions in adulthood. Obesity. Childhood trauma can contribute to the development of unhealthy coping mechanisms, such as overeating or a sedentary lifestyle, which may lead to obesity and related health issues. Diabetes. There is evidence suggesting that childhood trauma may increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes later in life. Autoimmune disorders. Some research indicates a potential connection between childhood trauma and autoimmune disorders, where the body's immune system gets confused and it mistakenly attacks its own cells and tissues. Chronic pain conditions such as fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, as I mentioned before. Substance abuse. Individuals who have experienced childhood trauma are at a higher risk of developing substance abuse in adolescence or adulthood. Weakened immune system. Early trauma can affect the immune system, making individuals more susceptible to infections and illnesses. I told you that I caught every disease going as I was growing up and, well, until recently, anyway. Self-harm. Early childhood trauma can lead to self-harm behaviors such as cutting in teenagers and adults. This connection is often rooted in the emotional and psychological impact that unresolved trauma has on an individual. Cancer, the big C. While the link is still being studied, some research suggests that early trauma may influence the risk of developing certain types of cancer later in life. It's important to know that early intervention, 
therapy and support systems can mitigate the impact of childhood trauma. Mental health counseling, support from loved ones, and community resources can play a crucial role in helping individuals overcome the effects of early trauma and reduce the risk of associated health issues. Most people don't want to think about their trauma or unhappy memories. They don't want to talk about it. They don't even want to acknowledge it. They suppress those feelings and memories rather than deal with the trauma they caused. They may feel that they have to show the world that they're okay, they're undamaged, and they're happy to protect themselves and their inner child. Many are ashamed to admit they have been abused, thinking it's somehow their fault. They think this is the only way to avoid more hurt. In reality, this outer bravado and shutting other people out only creates an environment of seclusion, keeping them from experiencing the love and compassion that we all crave. But also, they may not even remember it. I'll explain why a little later. I just wanted to include these statistics so you can see that you're not alone in your emotional turmoil. Healing your unhappy past will take time and commitment, but it is possible. When children feel unsafe, unloved, unwanted, there's a sense of danger, and that can last throughout their lives, causing them to experience pain in adulthood, which profoundly affects their self-image and relationships with others. That's the stage where many of us are now. We, we all have an inner child that we carry with us forever. For some, that inner child carries fond memories. But for many of us, she carries anger, hurt, frustration, sadness, guilt, shame, and any number of other unwanted emotions. Do you have chronic pain or illness? As promised, I'll delve into that later in this webinar. So how do we identify a wounded inner child or an adult with unwanted emotional memories? If you always seem to sabotage relationships, if you find yourself in one toxic relationship after another, if you always expect the worst from others and you just can't trust anyone. If you have a hard time to say no, even if you want to. If you can't seem to do anything right, no matter how hard you try, then you likely have a wounded inner child. Do you fear change? Want everything to always remain the same because that's your comfort zone? Do you have low self-esteem and are self-critical? Do you suffer from anxiety, social phobias, or clinical depression? Do you find it impossible to let go of emotional pain? Do you hold grudges or wallow in long-term grief? Do you suffer from a pain disorder like fibromyalgia? Do you have panic attacks? If any of this resonates with you, then your inner child is crying out for help. Perhaps you suffered through abandonment, either from a parent, a caregiver, or a partner then you'll likely feel like you've been left out with family, friends, at school, at work, in social engagements. Harbor a fear of being left out. 
be uncomfortable being alone. Exhibit codependency traits. Gravitate towards other emotionally unavailable people. If you suffer from guilt, you may feel sorry whether or not something's your fault. You may hate asking for help. It's kind of me. <laughs> Use guilt as a manipulation tool to get people to do what you want. That was my mother. Be afraid of setting boundaries. If you have trust issues, you may fear being hurt by someone. You may distrust yourself and others. Feel unsafe. Actively seek out reasons to be distrustful of others. Be insecure and constantly seek validation from others. If you suffered from neglect, you may harbor feelings of low self-worth. You may have trouble letting go of people, things, anger, or even grief. You may have a short temper. You may hold your emotions inside, not showing them to the rest of the world, not even to your family. You may have a hard time to say no. You may fear being vulnerable, which keeps you aloof from intimate relationships. You may feel like you're invisible unseen and unheard. In short, a wounded inner child may present as someone who finds it hard to say no, is unable to set and maintain boundaries, avoids conflict at any cost, can't stand up for herself because it makes her feel guilty, ashamed or afraid, finds it near impossible to ask for help has a fear of letting go or being abandoned, feels unworthy of love or success, is self-critical. Does any of this sound like you? If you answered yes to any of the foregoing, then you are dealing with your wounded inner child and you'll continue to face triggers resulting from those wounds for the rest of your life unless you learn to heal those inner wounds and free your inner child from all the conflict and distressing events she experienced. Let's be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you or your inner child. You were perfectly made, as we all are, but trauma has broken parts of her that need mending. And that, my friends, is interfering in our adult life, causing us to miss out on some of the really good things in life. What is trauma? You can unmute yourself so you can answer. What is trauma? <laughs> A horrible experience. Okay, is it anything else? Something you can't forget, something you don't understand. Uh, you don't know why it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. You feel unsafe, um, alone. Uh, a thousand other feelings yeah okay so a lot of people think that trauma is physical abuse sexual abuse emotional abuse violence acts of war terrorist attacks car accidents 
PTSD, natural disasters, kidnapping, human trafficking and smuggling. Those definitely cause trauma, but the acts themselves are not trauma. Does that surprise you? Yeah. Trauma, according to many trauma experts, is actually the unresolved pain caused by any of those events. It's not the event. It's how you react to it. That's the key. You see, everyone reacts differently to the same events. So therefore, not everyone will develop trauma, even though they went through the same or similar experiences. And just to be clear, trauma doesn't even have to be caused by major events. Trauma is formed by our individual response to events. It could be something really simple, something that the rest of us think is nothing. But to that person, it becomes traumatic. For instance, I know someone who was deeply traumatized by being singled out and made to sit on a stool at the front of the class as punishment for talking in school. Now, we might think that was something minor, maybe even laugh at it, but to that person, it was deeply traumatic and still affects that person today. Now, on the other hand, I also know someone who responded to being raped as a child by a relative. She became a tomboy and a bully. And another friend who had also been raped by a relative proceeded to gain over 100 pounds to make herself unattractive to others. Two women with similar circumstances reacting in different ways. How do we know if we have unresolved memories? Answer the following questions. Um, they keep coming back up. <laughs> do you it's want to be free fun. from the past and experience emotional freedom like you've never felt before? Do you want to climb out of the depths of despair? Yes. Do you want to stop feeling guilty or ashamed? Not do you anymore. Want, do you want to finally resolve your suffering from grief and abandonment? Definitely, yes. Do you want to stop having panic attacks? Yeah. Do you want to reduce your physical pain? Because chronic emotional pain can cause chronic physical pain, whether you realize or not. It can. Do you want to forgive yourself for not standing up and defending yourself better, even though you were a helpless child? Yes. Do you want to stop blocking success from your path because you don't feel worthy or you feel like an imposter? Do you want to relearn how to trust yourself and others. Yes. Do you want to stop shying away from romantic relationships and find the partner of your dreams? Do you want to get rid of fear? Yes. Or are you just looking for a way out of whatever emotional hell that you're in? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it's safe to assume you've been through some trauma and that trauma is still active in your body. Would you like to heal those inner wounds? Mm -hmm. You know the ones I'm talking about. They keep rearing their ugly heads time after time, sucking the joy and life right out of you. Okay. If so, listen up. You may want to take a few notes or just watch the replay. 
What would you say if I told you I can help you heal your inner child and resolve disturbing memories so you can experience joy with a new outlook on life? Does that even sound possible to you? Yes, but I think it's not easy. Right. It may seem far-fetched to some of you right now, but that's because you don't know how. You didn't know how to walk or talk until someone taught you, right? Did anyone teach you how to heal your inner wounds? No. It's not something you learn at home or at school. If no one taught you, then how are you supposed to know? I offer you the tools and lead you through the healing process and you'll not only heal your inner child, but make a positive impact on your physical health as well. I want you to be very clear on this. You are not alone in your journey to emotional freedom. I'm here to help and support you in any way I can. Do you want the freedom to be happy, to not wait for the next harrowing episode, the freedom to trust again, the freedom to accept that you're worthy, loved, and appreciated, the freedom to love someone, get married, and have children, the freedom to know many of the things to avoid when raising your own children so that you don't thrust your emotional trauma onto them? Many of us can trace our conflicts to our parents or other family members. We're raised to honor and love our parents and siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins, and we have lots of fun along the way. However, in the privacy of our home, the dark side eventually rears its ugly head, and we develop a love-hate relationship with these people. Now that's what's so confusing. We're supposed to love and honor them, but yet they hurt us in unimaginable ways. Perhaps you were teased or ridiculed, bullied, put down, left to your own devices. Sometimes we don't even remember what happened. That's because children's brains are not developed enough to process terrifying events. In fact, it's been studied and concluded that the human brain cannot process trauma on its own until we're in our mid-twenties. That's a lot of trauma to hold on to. As a safety measure, the childhood brain shuts down and even buries the event deep in the psyche so we can go on with our lives and not go crazy. I'm sure you've heard the statement, children are so resilient. But really, that's not quite true. They're not really as resilient as you think. They're just being self-protective. We may temporarily forget what happened or never remember it at all, especially if it's intergenerational trauma. We may think we led an idyllic childhood, had the best parents, and for some lucky people, that's true. But sadly, most often it's not the case. Nobody's perfect. Then again, distressing events may remain dormant in our brain until we're older, when it hits us like a ton of bricks. The part of the brain responsible for decision-making, impulse control, and emotional regulation, i.e. the prefrontal cortex, continues to develop during adolescence and is not fully mature until our mid-twenties. If, however, a child receives proper psychological care from trained professionals, it is possible for them to process the event and lead normal, happy lives. Unfortunately, this is most often not the case. More often than not, 
we have been left to figure it all out on our own. Years ago, parents didn't take into account the child's emotional well-being. They just dictated what we could do or say or couldn't do or couldn't say. We were to be seen and not heard in a lot of cases. In short, we sacrificed our wants and needs for the authority figure's wants and needs so we could be deemed good children and avoid punishment. According to Carl Jung, in every adult there lurks a child, an eternal child, something that is always becoming, is never completed, and calls for unceasing care, attention, and education. That is part of the personality which wants to develop and become whole. Pretty insightful. Without that healing, we remain where we are, in a constant state of flux. Whether you believe it or not, the body never forgets. Let's try a little experiment. Close your eyes right now. And take a moment to remember a time when you were embarrassed or ashamed. What happened to make you feel this way? You don't have to answer out loud. Just think about it. Do you remember how it felt? When you think about it, how does that make you feel right now in this moment? You can unmute yourself if you wish to share your answer. I bet you have the same feelings and the same depth of feelings that you had when the event first occurred, right? That's because the body never forgets. In fact, the unhappy memories are lying in wait, constantly producing inflammatory chemicals, the same ones in the fight, flight, freeze response we all feel when threatened. You may have never been able to resolve what happened. Instead, you've had to handle all life's difficulties on your own, forcing you to grow up too quickly and become self-reliant. This, unfortunately, often ends up as an aloof adult who rejects friendships or relationships, has trust issues, suffers from obsessive compulsive disorder, and embraces perfectionism as a means to forget and find acceptance or praise. That inner you is still inside you, panicked, feeling abandoned, causing you to get triggered and even have panic attacks when faced with certain events. It's our job to save ourselves. No one else is going to do it for us. Only we can do it for ourselves. I can guide you through the process, but I can't make you do it. And in case you're wondering, I'll be employing various modalities based on things I've personally learned and used. So I won't be relying on a single technique like AFT, of which I'm a practitioner, to facilitate that healing. I'll employ written lessons, recorded audio meditations, yes, some AFT techniques, and even delve into the area of healing frequencies, foods, and diet. All of these have a great impact on the health of our bodies. So if you want to be free from the past and experience emotional freedom like you've never felt before, if you want to stop feeling guilty or ashamed, if you want to finally resolve your suffering from grief and abandonment, if you want to reduce your physical pain, 
if you want to forgive yourself for not standing up and defending yourself better, if you want to be successful in any part of your life, if you want to trust yourself and others and create meaningful friendships, if you want to feel safe enough to seek out a fulfilling romantic relationship, if you want to be comfortable with who you truly are, if you want to stop having panic attacks, if you're just looking for a way out of emotional and physical hell, and maybe even lose a few extra pounds along the way, then my master program, Healing the Past, Empowering the Present, is for you. Dealing with emotional upheaval is difficult and requires time, understanding, and compassion. If you think you can handle it on your own, kudos to you. But think about this. If you have a broken arm, you go to the doctor, right? If you have a cavity, you go to the dentist. If you have a headache, you take a pill. We're very quick to seek physical help. But when it comes to emotional or mental health, most people ought to forget about it instead of seeking help. Why is that? Sad to say that none of those things will help heal your emotional attachment to the past. If you truly want to heal, you need help. Some put their faith in God, that he will heal them. And that's indeed possible if you believe in miracles. And if you're religious, you probably do believe in miracles. But sometimes... God puts you in contact with other people who can help you, like doctors and dentists and therapists and practitioners. Don't reject the lifeboat waiting for God to heal you. He already gave you the tools to heal. Sometimes he just wants you to jump on the lifeboat he sent. Am I your lifeboat? Maybe. Or maybe someone else suits you better. There are a lot of therapists and practitioners out there. Choose one who has actual experience of abuse, as they know what it's like. Back to the master program I created, and then I'll talk about that other thing that I'm doing now with amazing results. Healing the past, empowering the present will have one class per week. This will allow participants time to view the lesson, process the information, and do the homework without it being overwhelming. In addition, there will be a secret Facebook group specifically for participants in the program where you can ask questions, connect, get support and guidance. It'll be the hub for announcements as well. On Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, that's Toronto Time, there will be a live Zoom call for everyone in the program to share their stories, be heard, and ask questions in a safe and supportive space. Just to be clear, social media is not a safe and supportive space to share sensitive stories. Even the private groups and chats are monitored by Facebook. And I've had some content deleted and deemed to have offended some obscure Facebook rule in a few of my other private groups. Some private groups, thankfully none of mine yet, have even been deleted by the powers that be. So let's not go there. Let's not share any sensitive information in the group. If you need to chat, just message me and we'll set up a phone or Zoom call to preserve your privacy. These Wednesday evening meetings may or may not be recorded, depending on whether the participants agree to have the meeting recorded and available in the group. In addition to the written lessons, 
There will be guided audio meditations and visualizations, as well as downloadable PDFs for your personal use, including a PDF version of my companion workbook. In short, I'm giving you the tools and lead you through the process to heal, but it will take commitment and work from you in order to achieve that healing. Don't expect someone else to do it for you. Only you can do it for yourself. If you follow the prompts and do the work, you can expect to feel happier, lighter, healthier, and freer after this program. Will you be completely healed? I can't promise that, as everyone is different. Trauma is stored in layers, like an onion. You may need some additional personal sessions in order to work through your issues. Not only will you shed some or all of those emotional experiences, but you'll be happier. And that's worth a lot, in my opinion. You may have less physical pain. Since we all know now that emotional pain can cause physical pain. And when I tell you about the other thing I'm doing, you will likely reduce even more pain, lose the brain fog, gain more energy, and maybe even lose a few pounds. But if you don't do the work, you'll remain where you are. Don't blame me for not being able to help you. That's on you. Essential oils are definitely helpful when healing the inner child, especially during guided meditations, journaling, and all types of AFT sessions, but not essential. If you would like a list of the ones I use, then please let me know. They're optional, but highly recommended. There are workarounds if you don't have them or don't want to purchase them. Another perk of becoming one of my students is that I offer private one-on-one -on -one Aroma Freedom sessions in discounted bundles of three, six, or 12 sessions specifically for my students. The general public will never see these prices. These bundles are awesome if you need extra help in managing and resolving difficult memories and emotions. So if you would like to take advantage of this, please don't hesitate to contact me and we'll set up a free one-on-one -on -one Zoom call to discuss your needs. You can email me at hello at margrakoski, that's M-A-R-G-R-E-C-O-S-K-I-E dot com, and I'll connect with you as soon as possible. Would you like to hear more about the master program? Okay, then yes, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I'll do then. <laughs> there are 25 lessons beginning Monday, September 9th, 2024. Why so many lessons? A lot of people don't wanna sign up for a lot of lessons. They want to get done in like three or four, but you can't get done in three or four. I've done my utmost to provide all the tools you need. I'll just quickly run through the topics and then we'll carry on. So first, first day we have the introduction. There's four parts to it. There's the general housekeeping. There's meet Marg. There's key storage areas in the brain. And there's the central nervous system. And that is also where you can download the workbook. Next, we'll talk about understanding the impact of childhood trauma on adult life. You'll also get some PDF downloads that are helpful in that lesson. Next, exploring and understanding your inner child. Now this section deals with learning more about your inner child and how to connect with her. You'll also find information about triggers and there are some valuable PDFs to download as well. Next comes how hope heals the inner child. Self-explanatory. 
Then we'll go into maladaptive coping mechanisms. In this section, you'll learn different ways to cope with trauma. You'll have some more valuable PDFs to download. You'll also have a guided audio meditation, which will be very relaxing and help you release anger. You'll even learn about self-harm and what to do about it. Next, we'll be creating a safe place and instituting some self-care practices. Again, that's pretty self-explanatory. There are two audio guided meditations in this lesson, which will help you connect with and protect your inner child. Then comes exploring self-treatment practices. In this lesson, you'll learn about some of the self-treatments that may be helpful. You'll learn how frequencies, remember I talked about frequencies, affect our bodies and our mind. And you'll also receive three different audio guided meditations to help with connecting, nurturing, and healing your inner child. Next comes recognizing and validating your pain. And you can follow along a guided meditation as well to nurture your inner child. And you can download some anxiety coping skills. Next comes games and activities for connecting and healing. You'll find some fun things to do in this lesson, plus two audio guided meditations. And just so you know, I've recorded them myself, so it's my voice you'll be hearing. Art therapy and journaling is the next topic. And it's all about creativity in helping to heal your inner child. We'll delve into art therapy and journaling, as well as automatic painting or drawing. No need to be an artist. Just follow along and enjoy the process. Then we'll learn about breath work. And we'll practice some breathing exercises. And there's also another guided meditation to follow. Grounding is the next topic. Many of us have heard about grounding, but do you really know what it's about and how to accomplish it? Learn all about it in this lesson and feel less stressful along the way. Then we're going to learn about understanding triggers and patterns. Do you know what your triggers are? Learn about them and validate your pain. There are some PTSD cards to download as well. Then we'll go into developing self-compassion. We're too hard on ourselves. I know I am. I know many people are. Learn how to develop some self-compassion, self-understanding, and self-acceptance. You can also follow along on another audio guided meditation to change your negative thinking. Then we'll go into how diet affects your healing. Now we've all heard that saying you are what you eat, but did you know that the food you eat can also affect your emotional healing? And some foods are higher in frequency than others. Learn all about it in this lesson. Forgiveness and letting go. In this lesson, you'll write some letters and follow another audio meditation to forgive those who hurt you. Now, I know you think that's impossible. You think it's impossible to forgive, but go through the lesson anyway, and you may find that you're able to see the light of day when it comes to forgiveness. Then we'll go into mirror work and affirmations. This lesson is all about challenges. Mirror work can be difficult, but it is extremely beneficial. And affirmations, when repeated regularly, can help change your negative thoughts and make positive changes in your life. 
then we'll go into coping with grief. This section will help cope with grief from the loss of a loved one, or even a treasured pet, or even a job. Grief experienced as a child may never have been resolved and could affect your daily life even as an adult. Then you'll learn about panic attacks. This lesson will address how to cope with a panic attack, including yet another audio meditation to help you calm down. Then we'll talk about intergenerational trauma. I just mentioned it briefly earlier. So whether you realize it or not, trauma, including even a fear of heights, can be passed down from generation to generation. In this lesson, you'll learn how it happens and what to do about it. And then we'll talk about recurring dreams and nightmares. Some dreams are cozy, some are scary. Learn about some of the most common ones, what they may mean, why you have them, and what to do about them. And then we'll talk about building resilience. And you'll follow yet another guided meditation to help build your resilience. Overcoming limiting beliefs. This lesson will challenge you to confront your negative thought patterns and will also help change your perspective. You can enjoy and repeat, I hope, the included empowerment mantras. Then we'll go into creating empowering relationships. Learn how to set boundaries, develop your assertiveness, build support networks, and create healthy communication skills. And then we'll go into moving forward with confidence. Now you're ready to move forward in your life. Set goals for the future. Have a recovery action plan and meditate to visualize your ideal life and go and get it. And then of course, the end of the course. And there will be a course evaluation form that I hope you fill out. And you'll also be able to download your beautiful certificate of completion. Now, each week you'll have homework to do dedicated to connecting with and healing your inner child. That's why there's only one lesson per week. You need time. This will all work together synergistically to help you heal your inner child through connection, love, support, comfort, and protection. This in turn will create a more peaceful and fulfilling adult life and bring the joy you've been missing. Oh, and before I forget, one lucky student per month for the duration of the program will win a free full-length Aroma Freedom session with me to work on one traumatic memory of their choice. How to qualify for this drawing is spelled out in the welcome on the first day of the program. So, who wants to join? We start today, Monday, September the 9th, 2024, and I'm only accepting 10 people. This will allow me to spend quality time with each of you. Now, you can start a little bit later, you know, a week or two, you should be able to catch up. So don't let that deadline of September 9th bother you. You will still get the full program, but after two weeks, you might have trouble catching up. But as an incentive to booking early, and I'm allowing you to book until the end of today, as an early bird special, you get $500 off. 
and that's reserved only for the first 10 people who end up joining the program. Of course, there's also a payment plan if you can't pay up front. The first 10 people who take me up on the amazing offer will get it, and the rest will have to wait until the next time, which is as yet undecided, and will then have to pay the full price. Don't end up like me. I had no means of resolving my past until just a few years ago, but my body had already been compromised with a myriad of health and pain issues. Even though I've released many of my childhood traumas, some of these health issues have gone on too long and turned into more debilitating pain, which is now much more difficult to control. I wish someone had offered me this information many years ago so I could have prevented some of these issues. Please don't wait. Take control of your emotional, mental, and physical health now before it's too late. I used to pride myself on all the physical things I could do on the farm, raising children, tending gardens, preserving produce, solving problems, running art workshops, and so much more. Driving two kids and my hobby to three different towns for three different ball games that started all at the same time. <laughs> volunteering at the school three times a week, then later in life going back into the workforce, creating and managing week-long art workshops for famous artists, teaching drawing and watercolor painting, running errands, visiting my parents who lived an hour away three or more times a week, and being their power of attorney to act on their behalf in financial and health care needs, finding an appealing nursing home for my parents, arranging funerals, writing obituaries and stories of their lives for my aunt and my grandmother as well as both of my parents, and handling all the legal paperwork. In short, I was superwoman, super mom, super wife, super daughter. I was proud of myself that I could handle it all. But all that stress, both mental and physical, added up to create constant pain. And now that pain has evolved into many more health issues. Now, I'm still able to lead a productive life, but at a much slower pace and with many more rest periods. I pay dearly for any physical work I do manage. Please don't end up like me. You owe it to yourself and your family to take care of your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual needs. Join now and release your painful past and learn to lead a happier, healthier life. That's my wish for you. I'll put the link in the chat. But you can always reach out to me via Facebook, Messenger, or text. The program is https colon slash slash www.margrakoski, that's M-A-R-G-R-E-C-O-S-K-I-E dot com slash healing dash the dash past. If you want me to send it to you, just let me know. And just as an added bonus, I'm including a whole lesson on diet and what I've been doing now to reduce my pain and eradicate brain fog. And I've only been on this for six days. <laughs> six days and I already, from day one, felt a difference. It seems too good to be true but you can follow my journey in my new Facebook group. If you want the link to that, just let me know. I chronicle everything day by day and give the good, the bad, and the ugly. No BS and no sugar coating. I don't like it myself. Why would I do that to you? I'll give you a little hint. What I'm doing now revolves around nourishment with frequencies. Did you know that everything, I mean everything, 
has a frequency. Everything in the universe is made up of energy that vibrates at different frequencies. A rock has frequency. The earth has frequency. Our bodies have frequency. In fact, every organ in our bodies has a different frequency. The frequency of photons determines the energy. Radio waves have a low frequency and low energy. And x-rays have a high frequency and lots of energy. Nikola Tesla believed that the frequency of vibration could be used to control matter and energy. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, he said. Frequency is the rate at which something vibrates. It's measured in cycles per second, or hertz, HZ. The higher the frequency, the faster the vibration. This vibration is caused by the transfer of energy from one object to another. The atoms are, of a rock vibrate at a different frequency than the atoms in a human body, and that's why rocks are solid and our bodies aren't. The frequency of vibration of a sound wave determines what pitch we hear, and the frequency of vibration of light waves determines what color we see. The principle of energy, frequency, and vibration can also be applied to our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. Our thoughts and emotions vibrate at different frequencies, and these frequencies can affect our physical health, our relationships, and our overall well-being. If we think negative thoughts, we will vibrate at a slower frequency, leading to anxiety, depression, and physical illness. But if we think positive thoughts, we'll vibrate at a higher frequency, leading to feelings of happiness, peace, and good health. This is why the law of attraction works. We think and feel that whatever we want is something we already have and how happy that makes us feel. Thus, we are thinking and feeling positive thoughts and emotions rather than the want that means we don't have it. If we don't have it and think about the lack of it or the want of it, We'll never get it because our thought frequency is too low. By learning to control our thoughts and our emotions, we can create the reality that we deserve. Frequency is sound waves. So why can't we hear the rock or the desk or the chair? Because the frequency or the sound waves is so slow that we can't even hear it. Similarly, ultra high frequencies are so high that we can't hear them either. I remember being in a jewelry store many years ago and I felt very uncomfortable because I could actually hear the frequency of their security system. I don't think anyone else heard it. My husband didn't, or he would have commented on it. That frequency was really high, and it really felt uncomfortable. Music has frequency. We can hear music because it has a much higher frequency than a rock. Most of us like music, but not everyone will like the same music. Nature has frequency. The earth has frequency. That's why when we walk barefoot outside, we feel more grounded and calm. We are absorbing some of the Earth's frequency through the soles of our feet. Think about your heart. How does it beat? It's a pump, and all pumps require electrical impulses to work. 
the heart gets electrical impulses from the cells in the cardiac conduction system. While all cells in your heart can conduct electricity, the cells in this system conduct it at very specific speeds. When you turn on an electrical device like a kettle or a laptop, it uses an alternating current to power it. This means that the current is alternating between a positive and a negative voltage, and it goes rather quickly. This backwards and forwards motion or oscillation is known as electrical frequency. Why do you think that when someone's heart stops, doctors use electric shock, very strong frequency, to restart it? A defibrillator is used to restart a heart as it has high frequency pulses of 200 hertz, which interrupt an ir irregular heartbeat in the hopes it will return to its regular rhythm. When an organ in your body isn't working, is it better to see a doctor and take a pill made from chemicals or find the frequency of that organ and know what frequency it's lacking and needs to heal? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't see your doctor. Obviously, we need medications to stay alive at times. Do what you need to do medically and then supplement with frequencies. I'll be sharing more about frequencies, including the products and foods that have high frequencies, as well as sound frequencies that you can listen to to help your healing. You'll find information about that in the master program I spoke about, and also part of that in my new Facebook group. Let me know if you want the link to either one of them. Already, you know I'm testing something that is frequency-based. I'm hoping it lives up to its science and testimonials. So far, it has exceeded my expectations. Get set for more learning, and let's discuss ways to get the frequencies you need. You'll have more energy and stamina, and may have a wonderful experience like you've never imagined. Use your newfound energy to create positive thoughts and bring positive changes into your life. All of this is included in the master program. Some of it is included in the Facebook group. You see, I'm not just a fix-it person for one thing. I incorporate so many different things so that you can live your best life. Perhaps a life you never thought you could. I look forward to helping you heal your past and heal your body in the program. Even if you personally aren't interested in this program right now, you may know someone who is. Please share this video on social media. There are so many people who really need to know that they can escape the trauma and live happily. And my reach is just not wide enough to cover them all. So I want to thank you all for participating and helping to make this an extraordinary event. If you're not interested in the master program and just want information about the frequencies, send me a message and I'll get back to you. My Facebook timeline where you can message me is www.facebook.com slash capital M A G G I E capital R E K O W S K I three, three, three. Or join the Facebook group and ask me there. The link to the Facebook group is www.facebook.com slash groups slash Margs Healing with Frequencies. That's M A R G S. H-E-A-L-I-N-G-W-I-T-H-F-R-E-Q-U-E-N-C-I-E-S. As a bonus, I'll now guide you through a meditation in case you have any triggers from the information I shared. 
This meditation is designed to shift out of a triggered state by using grounding techniques, breath work, and visualization to restore balance. For clarity, all meditations and visualizations in the master program have been created using soothing music in the background to further enhance your emotional healing. As I'm doing this live, I don't have access to the music, but you can get an idea of what to expect from the meditations in the master program. So let's get started. Find yourself a comfortable seated position or lie down if that feels more restful for you. Gently close your eyes. Take a moment to settle into your body, allowing yourself to feel supported by the surface beneath you. Let go of any expectations, allowing yourself to be present in this moment knowing that you are safe. Take a deep, slow breath in through your nose, filling your lungs completely. Hold it for a moment and then exhale slowly through your mouth. Imagine that with each breath out, you are releasing any tension anxiety, or stress that may have arisen from the trigger. Repeat this breathing pattern. Inhale deeply for a count of four. Hold it for a count of four. And exhale slowly for a count of six. With each exhale, Envision the trigger dissolving, like smoke dissipating into the air. Bring your attention to your body, starting with your feet. Notice any sensations there without judgment. As you focus on each part, imagine it softening, releasing tension, and becoming grounded. Feel your feet connected to the earth. Rooted in stability. Move up to your legs, noticing any tightness. Imagine them softening, sinking into the support beneath you. Bring awareness to your hips, your pelvis, and your lower back. Breathe into this area, allowing it to release. Focus on your chest and heart center, softening the space, allowing your breath to flow freely. Now move to your shoulders, 
your neck and your jaw. With each exhale, let go of any tightness, envisioning the release of the weight you're carrying. Finally, bring awareness to your head, allowing your mind to quiet down as you soften the muscles of your forehead and scalp. You feel as light as a feather, like you're floating on a cloud. Nothing and no one can hurt you here. You are safe from all harm. Now bring to mind the specific trigger that caused an emotional reaction. And without becoming attached to the feelings, simply observe them as an outsider, as if watching a scene in a movie. Acknowledge the sensations or emotions that arise. Imagine a warm, golden light enveloping the triggered emotion. This light represents compassion, understanding, and healing. With each breath, the light expands gently loosening the grip of the triggered response. If any thoughts arise, say to yourself, I see you and I choose to release you. Allow the golden light to grow brighter and stronger, filling your entire body with a sense of peace and calm. Now, repeat these affirmations silently or aloud, allowing each one to sink into your subconscious mind. I am safe in this moment. I choose to release what no longer serves me. I allow myself to return to a state of calm and balance. I am grounded and I am in control of my emotions. I trust myself to navigate my triggers with compassion.
feel the words resonate through your body, affirming your power to heal and to let go. Now imagine yourself standing in a peaceful place, perhaps in nature or any serene space that feels like home to you. See yourself grounded and centered, free from the emotional weight of the trigger. Visualize yourself moving forward with a sense of peace, strength, and clarity. Take a few more deep breaths, slowly bringing your awareness back to the present moment. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. Know that this moment of triggered response does not define you. You have the tools to pause, observe, and release, regaining control over your emotional landscape. Take this sense of peace with you as you move forward into your day. How do you feel? Very relaxed. That's what? great. Soothing. Pardon? Your voice is so soothing. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to fall asleep. <laughs> well, you. you know something? Even if you fall asleep, the meditation still goes into your your brain. So you can listen to it. You can fall asleep. You can do whatever you want, but don't use any machinery or drive a car. <laughs> No, I just didn't want to be rude. <laughs> but I it did feel so relaxed. It, it seemed like every phrase you said was perfectly tied to what I needed to do. Uh, it it just it hit all the right places. Sometimes it's... your meditations um you know, either the voice or the the tone or the speed of them speaking can be almost intrusive to yes. what they're trying to do. And I just totally felt relaxed. Maybe it's also because I've had that experience with you before. So it was even quicker for me to allow myself to relax. The more often you practice meditation, the quicker you will get into that feeling of peace and safety. So I know myself, all I have to do if I'm, if my mind is addled at night when I'm going to bed, it's like, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do, this. oh, I gotta do. I just lay there and say, I have to calm myself now call my brain and it works because I've done it so much <laughs> anyway I'm going to stop the recording now thanks again and I'll see you in the program hey.